Howdy, I'm Caleb Murphy, a third year veterinary student from the Texas A&M College of Veterinary Medicine. I am with Pew, a partner in environmental education and rural health. In our interview series, Careers in Veterinary Medicine, we will be meeting Captain Haley Davis and Lieutenant Colonel Jared Madden. They are two of the veterinarians at the Fort Hood Military Base. My name is Captain Haley Davis. I am a veterinary corps officer, and right now I am stationed at Fort Hood, Texas. I think that being an Army veterinarian is different from general private practice just because we get to do a lot more things that are kind of unrelated to our traditional hands-on animal medicine. Uh, for example, in being an Army officer, you get to do a lot of food mission. Um, so we actually go out to our commissaries, we go out to our shopettes, um, we go out to anyone that is off post and wants to sell to our facility and we go and make sure that their facility, that their food is safe, that their food is secure, and that their facility is well defended against outside threats. So I really think that the breadth of experience that we get outside of the clinic is what sets us apart from general practice. I decided I want to be a military veterinarian because I come from a family of service. I grew up, my dad was in the Marine Corps for 23 years, and so growing up my dog always saw the uh, veterinarian on post, and what really kind of solidified this career choice for me is that going from duty station to duty station as a kid, having a pet and having, you know, someone that kind of bridges that gap between you and the, the new neighborhood kids is is a really awesome experience and so I kind of wanted to give back to that community that kind of raised me and really helped me through my through my childhood by being a veterinary officer here in the military. So the general mission of the Veterinary Corps is to provide veterinary, serv veterinary and surgical services for privately owned animals, for our military working dogs, for our military working horses, and to also do food security and food defense for any facility both on post um, or on the installation or for institutions that want to sell to us from off post. We also participate in several humanitarian missions where we go um, outside of the country and we can work with things as far diverse as polar bears and penguins up in the Arctic um, to going down to the Caribbean and working with any wild ruminants that they have, wild um, pigs as well. Uh, we do such a wide variety of things, and we also participate in biomedical research and development to help protect our human soldiers on the front lines as well. We interact with a lot of people, even with the current uh, curbside service that we're at. Um, we interact with all of our clients that have privately owned animals. Um, we also interact with all of the handlers that come in with the working dogs. We interact with the 1st Cavalry Unit here at Fort Hood. Um, all of their horses, they have about 40 horses and two mules, so we interact with all of the riders and the cavalry soldiers that are over there. We also interact with all of our um, managers of all of the food organizations that we go and inspect. We interact with the unit commanders um, that are interested in learning more about the veterinary mission. And we also uh, impact just the general population here on post. We do a lot of public health um, outreach and education, so we impact them as well. It's hard to say what a normal day is because every day is different, um, just like it is in the civilian world. Um, a normal day can range anything from seeing appointments from nine to five. Uh, a normal day for me yesterday was driving out to a bottled water facility and walking the grounds with the managers there, making sure that their bottled water is safe for the military to purchase and consume, making sure their facility is in safe from outside forces. Um, so that was a normal day for me yesterday. And a normal day for me on Friday might look like me going and practicing my shooting out on the shooting range um, with the rest of the captains here to keep up my soldier skills as well as my medical skills. So I think the most interesting experience I've had so far, um, we, expen we 
uh, spend time at a course called BOLIC, Basic Officer Leadership Course. We had the opportunity this past summer to deploy to do a field exercise during this course where we spend an entire week out in the Texas summer in tents and we learn basically um, how to set up a tent to help evacuate soldiers to, uh, how to call in what's called a nine line. So if you're on the front line, um, you kind of have to call in a helicopter and kind of brief them on who's going to be coming in, what kind of injuries they have, how many people you have, um, what what mode of transportation you're using to get there so they know to expect you and they're ready for you at the hospital. So I think that that experience was really cool. It was the first time that I was really able to actually be a soldier and learn to do um, what, what the stuff our soldiers are doing on the front lines every day. Uh, so that was really cool. So some challenges that Army vets deal with. Uh, I think one of the big ones is during our, our vet school education, we're only really taught the clinical medicine side. And so learning how to kind of stretch to encompass the other aspects of our job, the public education side, how to teach technicians to be technicians, um, and how to counsel soldiers on family problems that they might be having. Because unlike regular jobs, when you're a soldier, you're a soldier 24 seven. You're not just a soldier nine to five. So learning how to be an army officer I think has been the biggest challenge for me personally. The medicine side is something that um, you leave vet school very prepared for. Uh, it's just these other duties that I wasn't really expecting that you kind of have to pick up on the fly. What keeps me going and what keeps me doing what I'm doing is definitely the clinical medicine side. I love speaking with clients, especially knowing that they're service members. I love helping them make that transition to another duty site. That duty site might be Korea. And having these clients come in that are trying to balance moving three kids, having a husband that's already deployed, not even there, having to deal with the children, having to deal with getting your family pet over there, your family member overseas. I really love being able to smooth out that experience and making a client kind of sigh with relief as they exit, kind of having a game plan on how to move forward with that animal and their treatment plan. Um, just kind of, I think being able to help uh, is what really, what really keeps me going and being able to make know that that family unit and that soldier is going to be stronger because I've been able to assist them and kind of get their mind on other things because they no longer have to worry about their other furry family member. The safety of being a military vet depends on where you are. Here in the United States, very, very safe. We work on a very well secure installation. No one can get in without having some form of identification. That being said, military veterinarians do have the capab capability of deploying overseas. And when you deploy overseas, you are typically in a veterinary center that is set up far back from the front lines. But there is the option for veterinarians to push forward towards the front lines and to volunteer to go on mission reconnaissance missions. And a lot of veterinarians do because as Army veterinarians, we're very interested in seeing through our soldiers' eyes and seeing what our dogs are doing on the front lines. So. As an Army veterinarian here in the United States, very safe, but as a soldier overseas, I would say that we face danger that is proportional to a lot of other Army officers. The advice I would give someone who's interested in becoming an Army veterinarian is to do your research, be proactive, and reach out to a recruiter and kind of be an advocate for yourself. This is a very small field. It's very hard to get information on it without going to someone who's actually in the Army. Um, the other thing you can do is reach out, um, search for a military installation that is closest to you, and see if you can find an Army veterinarian who's willing to give you their phone number. Reach out and talk to them, um, kind of like I'm talking to you. Get, get their experience. Um, the other thing I would really say is, uh, Make sure that you stay on top of your physical fitness. Um, we, like all other soldiers in the Army, have to pass and maintain physical standards. So just be aware that it's, it's not all sitting on a computer and seeing patients. It's also uh, getting out there and being proactive as well. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Jared Madden. I'm the Deputy Commander for Public Health Activity Fort Hood. And I'm also uh, assigned to 1st Med Brigade, where I serve as their brigade veterinarian.
So right now, uh, since I have kind of two jobs, uh, the public health activity job, we have vet clinics spread out from Louisiana all the way to California, uh, where we take care of the military working dogs and we also do food safety. Um, so my job is to just uh, help the commander oversee that. And he's, our commander is not a veterinarian, so I specifically focus on the veterinary aspects of, uh, of that mission. And then on the first bread brigade side, uh, uh, when I'm, that's kind of like a reserve job, even though I'm not reserves. When when they need me, they call me to be with First Mayor Brigade, and my job is to advise the commander on on veterinary aspects of of whatever the job is. It was kind of an interesting story. I I kind of been interested in joining uh, the army ever since high school. I uh, looked at a few options with the National Guard. And then I made it in a vet school, and I'd kind of written it off because I was going to be a veterinarian, which that's what I wanted to do eventually. Uh, but then our dean came and talked to us uh, about three or four weeks into vet school, and he was a retired Army veterinarian. And he told us all about his experiences, and, and I knew right then that that's, that's what I wanted to do. So I've had, I've had a lot of interesting uh, experiences. Uh, that's one of the things I love about this job. Uh, anything from uh, deployment to Afghanistan where we were taking care of military working dogs over the southern part of Afghanistan. We were also doing food safety there. That was uh, a very interesting experience. I've been on a ship for uh, an exercise called Pacific Partnership. I've done that twice uh, where we go. I was in the Pacific so we went through uh, the southern Pacific, went to several islands. We did lots of different stuff there. We did stuff from uh, working with a spay, neuter, uh, non-government organization in Sri Lanka to uh, artificial inseminating cows in Indonesia. Uh, so a wide, wide range of stuff and um, that's part of the thing that makes it so exciting. Probably the biggest challenge is time. We, we have a like I said, a very wide range of jobs and mission. And uh, the, the one thing that never gets added is time. <laughs> so uh, we, we, it's very, uh, it's a demanding job and just finding the time to fit in everything that we need to do is, is challenging. Again, we have a lot, a wide range of jobs in the Army. Uh, when I deployed, I was part of a medical detachment, and our main job is to take care of the military working dogs and provide food safety to, to our soldiers. Uh, so we, we pretty much stuck to the FOBs. We did a few convoys and flying around uh, Afghanistan uh, to do that mission, but our, we, I would not say we were operational. There are some veterinarians that are in civil affairs units. We have some special forces, uh, some veterinarians that are in special operations. And, and they do a little bit more of the traveling, working with the local population, stuff like that. So they're out a little bit more. Um, I can't, I've never done those jobs, so I can't really speak uh, about that a whole lot. But even those jobs, again, they're not the ones, or they're usually not the ones, you know, out uh, kicking down doors, uh, making movement on objectives and stuff like that. Yes, so uh, I've, I've done both. Uh, so our medical detachments, they have uh, tents that they're designed to set up in. When we deployed some of our uh, places, it was a pretty mature theater, so they had hardened buildings that they were in, but a lot of them were still in tents. Uh, so uh, it, we, we definitely have field hospitals that we operate out of. And then, uh, I, like I said, I was on a ship uh, for four months uh, with the Navy, and uh, what we did, we, we didn't really do a lot on the ship. We, we went to a island, a country, and then we, we went ashore and did our mission. And then we came back to the ship when we were done. So we didn't do a whole lot of our mission on the ship, but we were, we were certainly on the ship for four months and, uh, and did our mission from there. If you want to be a veterinarian and you're looking for something challenging and rewarding, uh, I, I think the Army is a, a great place to, to start or to go. Uh, it's, uh, 
So I've, I'm on my sixth duty site, I think, and every one of them's been completely different. Uh, I've done a lot of, a lot of interesting stuff. I've gone to a lot of different countries, and um, it, it's just a great experience you know, if that's the kind of stuff you're looking for. I'd recommend it. <laughs> this concludes our visit with Captain Haley Davis and Lieutenant Colonel Jared Madden. We hope you have a better understanding of the role of a military veterinarian. If you'd like to learn more about veterinary medicine, please visit our website at vetmed.tamu.edu. Thank you and have a good day.